What if I told you that a plane declared dead by its own manufacturer might soon fly again? Not just any plane, the largest passenger aircraft ever built. And behind this audacious revival, a staggering $20 billion bet from a single airline that refuses to let this giant of the skies fade into aviation history. Welcome to the story of Emirates' mission to potentially resurrect the mighty Airbus A380. The year is 2021. Airbus delivers its final A380, marking the official end of the super jumbo era. For most airlines, it's the conclusion of a chapter they're pretty eager to move past, but not Emirates. While other carriers rush to retire their A380 fleet, Emirates doubled down. Today, they operate over 100 of these double-decker giants, more than all other airlines combined. But why is Emirates so attached to an aircraft the rest of the aviation world seems ready to forget? It's not just nostalgia, there's a man with a vision, and he believes the A380 story is far from over. So Tim Clark, Emirates president, has put a radical proposal on Airbus's desk. He's not asking for minor tweaks or updates, he's pushing for something much bigger, a completely reimagined A380, the A380neo. I still have a design in front of Airbus as to how they could build a new one which would be 25% cheaper to run, far more fuel efficient than this one. Clark Clark explained when speaking to industry publication Executive Traveler. When Airbus responded that such a project would cost $20 billion to develop, Clark didn't blink. His reply, if you build them, we'll buy them. Would you spend $20 million to revive an airplane everyone else has abandoned? To understand Clark's vision, we first need to understand why the original A380 failed. When Airbus unveiled the A380 in the early 2000s, it was a marvel of engineering. Double-decked with space for up to 853 passengers, it promised to revolutionize long-haul travel. But the Super Jumbo had four critical weaknesses. Firstly, it was incredibly heavy, with a maximum takeoff weight of 1.2 million. Secondly, its four engines guzzled fuel at a staggering rate. Thirdly, its massive 80-meter wingspan limited which airports could handle it. And fourthly, the aviation industry was shifting towards smaller, more efficient twin-engine jets. These weren't just minor issues, they were fundamental flaws that eventually grounded the program. So what makes Clark think he can succeed where Airbus failed? Well, the answer lies in how much aviation technology has evolved since the A380 was first designed over 20 years ago. When engineers developed the original A380, composite materials were still relatively new in commercial aviation. The Super Jumbo used some composite its, but its structure remained predominantly metal. Today's picture is dramatically different. Modern aircraft like the Boeing 787, they use carbon fiber reinforced polymers for up to 50% of their structure. These materials are lighter, stronger, and more resistant to fatigue and corrosion. Clark's A380 NEO proposal would leverage these advancements to completely reinvent the aircraft's framework. We now know a lot more about the A380 than we did when it was built, Clark emphasized. The fin is too large, the wings need to be changed. All of this is in the later generation of aircraft. His vision includes a smaller vertical stabilizer, which is a tail fin, to reduce drag. Redesigned wings with improved aerodynamics, extensive use of composites throughout the airframe, potentially folding wingtips similar to the Boeing 777X to improve airport compatibility. These changes alone, they could dramatically reduce the aircrafts and improve its aerodynamic efficiency. But the real game changer lies in what would power this reimagined giant. Have you ever wondered why we don't see more four-engine aircraft in the skies anymore? If there's one technology that could make or break the A380 NEO concept, it's the engines. The original A380, it was powered by four massive engines, either the Rolls-Royce Trent 900 or the Engine Alliance GP 7000. While impressive, these power plants were designed with 1990s technology. Enter the Rolls-Royce Ultrafan, potentially the most revolutionary jet engine developed in decades. If it's ever allowed to get its head above the water level, this is a revolution in power, Clark stated with clear excitement. And he might be right, the Ultrafan isn't just an incremental improvement, it's a complete rethinking of how a jet engine should work. Rolls-Royce's demonstrator ran for the first time in 2023, and the results were impressive. It delivered a thrust above 87,000 pounds force in ground testing, exceeding targets and confirming its potential for wide-body aircraft. What makes the Ultrafan special? A geared turbofan architecture that optimizes each part of the engine, a massive 140-inch fan diameter, one of the largest ever developed composite fan blades that reduce weight, advanced heat-resistant materials, including ceramic matrix composites, compatibility with 100% sustainable aviation fuel, SAF, 
and a variable pitch fan system for optimized performance at all flight phases. According to Clark, these innovations could slash fuel consumption by 20 to 25% compared to the current engines. That's not just an improvement, it's a transformation in operating economics. Combined with the airframe enhancements, an A380neo could potentially achieve fuel efficiency competitive with twin engine wide bodies while carrying far more passengers. But there's another crucial piece to this puzzle, one that might be even more important than technology. When passengers talk about their favorite aircraft, one name consistently tops the list, the A380. There is a reason for this. The A380 isn't just a method of transport, it's an experience. With more than 550 cubic meters of cabin volume, far more than any competitor, the A380 offers something no other aircraft can match, space. Emirates has leveraged this advantage masterfully. Their A380s feature first-class suites with sliding doors for complete privacy, an onboard lounge where premium passengers can socialize, shower spas for first-class passengers, wider seats in all classes thanks to the aircraft's generous fuselage, a remarkably quiet cabin environment, smoother rides at high altitudes due to the aircraft's size and weight. These aren't just luxury additions, they're powerful marketing tools that command premium prices. In a post-pandemic world where passengers increasingly value personal space and premium experiences, the A3A380's cabin advantages have only grown more relevant. Think about it. Would you pay extra to fly on an aircraft where you could actually take a shower at 40,000 feet? While passenger experience matters, airlines ultimately make decisions based on economics. The original A380 struggled because its unit costs were simply too high. The final A380 sold for approximately $445 million each, a price tag that required consistently full flights to justify. But Emirates, they've managed to make the economics work where others couldn't. In 2023, Emirates operated over 100 daily A380 flights across six continents, serving more than 40 destinations. Their configuration of up to 615 passengers in a two-class layout it allows them to achieve competitive seat mile costs when the aircraft is full. Clark believes an A380neo could dramatically improve these economics through 20 to 25% lower fuel consumption, reduced maintenance costs through modern materials and systems, improved operational flexibility with potentially folding wingtips, continued premium pricing for the superior passenger experience. There's also the infrastructure advantage. Emirates has invested heavily in A380-specific facilities. It's got dedicated maintenance hangars designed just for the super jumbo. It has extensive spare part inventories, specialized pilot training programs, and simulators and it's got airport gates and boarding bridges optimized just for the A380. From a fleet management perspective, continuing with an updated A380 offers logistical continuity that would be difficult to replicate with a mixed fleet of smaller aircraft. But there is a more fundamental question at play. Does the aviation market still need aircraft this large? The long-standing industry trend has been towards smaller aircraft flying more frequently, Twin-engine jets offer route flexibility and lower risk of empty seats, but this approach is reaching its limits at many three major airports. Heathrow, JFK, Tokyo Narita, and dozens of other key hubs are slot-constrained. They simply cannot handle more takeoffs and landings. At these airports, the only way to grow is to use larger aircraft. This is where the A380neo could find its niche. On ultra-high density routes between major hubs, a more efficient super jumbo could provide the capacity airlines need without requiring additional slots. According to industry analysis from Kappa, some of the highest revenue international routes are still served profitably by the A380. With 20 to 25% lower operating costs, an A380neo, it could strengthen its case on these corridors. There's also the environmental angle to consider. Have you considered that bigger planes might actually be better for the environment on certain routes? That's it for today. If you found this video informative, then don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.